In 2015, JoeCon, the G.I. Joe fan convention, was in my hometown of Springfield, Illinois. So since there was a convention in my hometown, it was something that I felt like I had to attend. And this was my first experience ever going to a G.I. Joe-centric show. The convention was really fun, but one of the highlights for me was a panel that I attended that was all about Action Force. You see, I've always been fascinated by hearing about the way some of our favorite toy lines were repurposed, repackaged, and released for other markets outside of the United States. And seeing the way that these G.I. Joe characters that we know and love were incorporated into Action Force was really fun and exciting, and I always love learning new things. But what really stood out to me the most were the Red Shadows. These characters that were created specifically for the Action Force toy line. I thought they were so cool that immediately upon getting back onto the show floor after this panel, I found some. In fact, a booth had a whole tub that was filled with Action Force figures. And I dug through the tub and that day I came home with a very small handful that you see here. I got a security guard, I got Red Shadow, I got Mouton, and I got the Kraken. And I love these figures. They are so weird and bizarre and totally my kind of toy. And I knew that there were others that I was interested in getting as well. And one of those being Skeletron, who was a mail away, but I never did pick up, at least not yet. But I think these are such fun action figures. And, you know, the way that they kind of leaned into the sci-fi and even spacey themes uh, really stands out to me personally. I think these are incredibly cool looking toys. Recently, I had the privilege of adding two amazing books to my collection. Total Action Force, The Battle Years, and Volume 2 by Brian Hickey. Uh, big fan of toy guides, obviously. And so these were really exciting to kind of dive into just to see what else existed for these lines. There's Kraken, there's Skeletron. I also love seeing Red Jackal, that repurpose of Destro, and Red Wolf. I mean, come on, how amazing is Skeletron? This is definitely a figure I'm gonna have to add to my collection at some point. And of course, that brings us to this, Robo Skull, probably the most famous vehicle from the Red Shadows faction in the Action Force lineup. Uh, these books by Brian Hickey are really amazing, and I will definitely link to these in the video description in case you're interested in checking them out yourself, uh, which I would highly recommend. So what is all of this about? What is this long-winded intro all for? Well, it brings me to a Kickstarter that you probably know about for a brand new version of that classic RoboSkull vehicle called RoboSkull Mark II. It's one of my most anticipated Kickstarters. I backed this thing immediately just because of my love and interest in the Action Force Red Shadows faction. And I just thought it looked like a really incredible vehicle. So that has not come out yet, but among the things that have finally started shipping is the phase of exclusive action figures. And that, my friends, is what I want to take a look at here today. So with the RoboSkull Kickstarter, there were actually two different types of action figures offered. There were modern style three and three quarter action figures, or if you more prefer that vintage O-ring G.I. Joe style, this was offered as well. We're gonna take a look at both versions. I am gonna move the modern one aside for now, and I wanna start by focusing on this vintage one. To be perfectly honest, this is the one that I was the most excited for, just because this vintage O-ring style is my preferred choice for a G.I. Joe action figure. Um, but I just love this. I gotta tell you right away, this card back is so impressive to me that I almost feel like it's a shame to open this up. In fact, I got the one that I ordered from my Kickstarter, saw how much I liked it, immediately jumped onto their sale, and I ordered myself two more because I think I'm probably gonna keep at least one of them mint on card because that's how good it is. It definitely evokes that vintage G.I. Joe style with this amazing artwork 
work off to the side here of the Wolf Trooper. You can see our figure with some accessories packed right aside him, but he's got more accessories up here at the top as well. He also transforms into Leader Skeletron. So he's got interchangeable parts. This is essentially two figures in one. This can either be Wolf Trooper, which is inspired by that vintage pilot for Robo Skull, or it could be Skeletron, uh, that mail away figure, which I think was intended originally to be the pilot for Robo Skull. So I love that as well. It's another reason to get multiples of these. Uh, when you look at the back, they even include two file cards, one for Wolf Trooper and one for Skeletron. And then above that, we've got some beautiful artwork for Robo Skull Mark II. Um, this packaging is amazing. It's sturdy. It feels like it's really quality made. It is beautiful. But I am going to rip this open because we're going to take a look at that action figure. So here is our retro O-ring style Wolf Trooper outside of the packaging. And man, this guy is awesome. He is just so awesome. Bringing in the tape measure, you can see he's right there at that three and three quarter inch scale. And the overall feel and style of this guy feels like he fits right at home with your vintage G.I. Joe action figures. The quality feels amazing on this. I was blown away by how awesome this feels outside of the packaging. Uh, deco on here is really nice. Everything is clean and bright. I love the nice, very shiny silvers you can see on the front of his armor here, up here on the shoulders, while the rest of him is just adorned with black and red, but it works so, so very well. And this is what articulation you can expect from this guy. It is very similar to Retro Joe's, but uh, with a little added bonus there. So look at that. The head can turn left and right. Also movement down here at the base of the neck. The shoulders go outwards, forwards, backwards. You have your swivel at the bicep and you have the new swivel wrist battle grip. That's right. He's got wrist swivel articulation, which is very, very nice. Uh, he is an O-ring figure, just like your classic Joe's. So that's what you get for the waist there. And then the legs, of course, can go slightly outwards, forwards, and backwards. We got your single bend at the knee. Uh, like I said, quality of the figure is very, very nice. Uh, he does come with a nice, clear figure stand there. And he's got foot pegs, so we can plug him right into that. That will help keep him standing. And lots of really fun accessories. Of course, we've got this awesome helmet, which fits over so well. I love the way it fits on the head. We even got this piece at the bottom of the helmet that perfectly fits on that embedded part of the armor on the front to complete the look of our pilot ready for Robo Skull. Uh, so incredibly cool. But more things to complete the look. Of course, we've also got this awesome jetpack accessory, which very similar to the Vintage Joe's. Look at that. The peg on the back looks just like those. Can plug onto his back there. And we've got a handful of different weapons, all of which are just molded in red plastic so we've got like an individual pistol weapon we've got a larger rifle weapon and we've also got this cool little double bladed like hand blade accessory uh really really cool stuff and of course since you've got those swivel wrists that actually helps with some of the display options here too because we can actually turn his wrist around to hold the barrel of the gun there which is really awesome. I mean, seriously, it's a super slick looking action figure. Fits right in with your retro Joes if you want to, even if they're Ninja Force like Zartan here, but I absolutely love it. Now, this is not where we end with this figure because we do have an alternate accessory in the form of an interchangeable head. Check this out. You've got the ability to transform this from the Wolf Trooper into the enemy leader Skeletron. You can actually change him into Skeletron. Now, this doesn't work like a normal popping off the head from a ball joint that you might expect from a modern figure. You've got to do a little bit of surgery here if you want to do this. Uh, before I do that, real quick, I forgot to mention this. You even got a little holster on the back of, um, of uh, the jetpack there which is definitely intended, I think, for the gun. I mean, like, they fit so well, like the guns. Look at that. A couple different ways you can actually attach it there that it seems to work really well. Here, see, I had it in there. Like, yeah, check that out. It's very cool. So anyway, let's remove the jetpack. And just like on your retro G.I. Joe figures, 
you do have a Phillips head screw in his back. So if you want to actually swap heads, you're going to have to get yourself a screwdriver and do a little bit of surgery. Now, I don't have a lot of experience or any experience at all with doing this, but a lot of Joe collectors might have this experience because they've probably done some swapping on O-rings before. Uh, but I'm going to kind of briefly show you here because I've already done it a few times just to kind of get it right. But you're going to have to undo the screw in the back there. It's a little black screw, so you definitely don't want to lose that. And then that will allow you to kind of crack the body open. Now, you'll notice everything just sort of falls apart when you do that. It exposes the O-ring on the inside of the figure. This does get a little tricky. Um, so this is where you're going to actually take out the old head. And in its place, you'll swap in the new Skeletron head. You want to make sure that it's positioned correctly there. Um, and... Obviously, the O-ring needs to stay wrapped around that central piece. Like I said, this part can be a little tricky. You're going to have to find a, a good way to kind of balance everything in order to get this guy fastened back together all the way. In my experience, just doing this a few times already before I was filming, I found it the easiest to go ahead and put the body together with the head on there and then kind of individually like pry the side open wide enough to get one arm in and then we'll pry the other side open to get the other arm in there we go just like that see now look this could take you a few tries it's not easy to do it is a little tricky but it's not impossible i've never done this before this video and i was able to figure it out obviously the last step is going to be putting that little screw uh in the back again and you're definitely going to want to make sure you tighten that all the way because that's what's going to keep you from having a bobble head on the figure and when all is said and done, my friends, we now have Skeletron, a brand new O-ring version of the evil leader Skeletron. We can put that jetpack back on his back, and he even has a very cool little blue laser sword of his own, uh, which is styled very cool. Look at that. It's got like a little blue translucent skull on there. And so now you can build out a little army if you want to. If you pick up multiples of these, you can create Skeletron, you can have him flanked by wolf troopers, you can pose him with your vintage Action Force Red uh, Shadows figures. I love this retro figure. He is amazing, and I'm so happy I picked a couple of these up. So that's going to bring us over here to the modern style action figures to take a look at those. The packaging on these is equally as awesome. You can see they definitely got away from the vintage G.I. Joe packaging to sort of do their own thing, but there's still some beautiful artwork on the side of the blister bubble housing the figure. I love this new logo up here at the top as well. You can see Skeletron logo at the bottom, Faction Series. Uh, really fun stuff. So these guys over here, these are the Assassin Skeledrones. These actually were the first things that shipped. So these have been out for a little while now, but I've been holding on to them. Them, and I just want to take a look at them here in this video with these guys. So we'll definitely be looking at these crazy little drones as well. Really fun stuff. But you can see the back of the packaging here does have a data file card. Uh, and then there is a cool cross sell up here, but I love how it's got loading on most of these characters. Real fun stuff. So then, of course, we've got the Red Shadows Wolf Trooper, uh, which is just like that vintage figure that we were just looking at a little bit ago, but this is the modern version of it here. Flipping around to the backside, you can see we've got the file card, and look, now that cross cell is totally visible showing all of those characters. Look at that Skeletron. Oh, baby, that's amazing. Very cool stuff. And the final figure that we will be looking at uh, in the modern wave that is out is Geyer Wolf. And you can see he's got a very different look with this amazing metallic silver on there. And here's the thing that, about this. This is really fun. You can see on the file card there, his name is Gary Goggles. Now, um, this particular figure is inspired by a real life person named Gary Goggles, uh, who was a big part of the GI Joe community and passed away several years back. Uh, I personally have never had the opportunity to meet Gary while he was still with us, but I've heard so many positive stories about him that I think that speaks to the legacy he left behind. So I do think it's really nice that they paid tribute 
to him uh, with this particular figure. You can even see that unhelmeted head sculpt there is absolutely inspired by him. It's got his signature goggles on the head there. Um, but even if you don't know Gary or never met Gary or that's new to you, um, this still stands alone as its own really neat looking action figure as well. And that is just the best way to do a tribute figure. With that being said, let's tear these open and get a closer look at the figures. My goodness, look at these. Uh, so if I bring in the tape measure on these, you can see they do stand a little bit taller, uh, just a bit over four inches tall. Uh, so we've got our modern take on Wolf Trooper as well as uh, Geyer Wolf over here. Um, so I'm gonna move this one off to the side for just a moment so we can get a closer look at this guy. First of all, let me just bring in for a quick comparison time the retro O-ring version with the more modern version of him. Uh, just so you can see him side by side, both equally awesome in their own ways. But it's really cool to see sort of like, you know, the vintage style modernized over here. It's awesome. I love seeing these side by side, both incredible figures. Uh, you can see I've already got this guy all armed up here. Uh, they do include their own type of bases there. You can see they're still clear, but they've got the little Robo Skull uh, insignia on there. And we've got some weapons as well. So you can see the larger uh, two-hand rifle there is pretty awesome. And then on the side there, look at that, I've got holstered the smaller pistol weapon. And uh, he's got the jetpack on his back where on the sides, I've also got these really cool claw accessories. So you can pop those off the backpack, those clip onto the forearms. So now you've got these clawed weapons if you wanna use those as well, uh, which are incredibly cool also. He's got a removable jetpack, just like we saw on the vintage figure. The peg hole is different, of course, a bit more modern on that peg hole. And the helmet is also removable. I was really impressed with just how well the helmet fits on this figure. It doesn't make his head look oversized or anything like that. It's really well done. And as far as articulation goes on this guy, it is a bit more modernized there. So you can see that head is jointed so we can look left and right. Uh, not really a far up and down movement. It is ball jointed. So you can see it kind of rocks around just a little bit there. The arms will go out to the sides forwards and backwards, swivel at the elbow with an elbow bend. You got the swivels at the wrists there. Uh, you can see at the waist, he's articulated there very nicely. Look at that ball jointed there at the waist. Uh, legs can go outwards, forwards, backwards, swivels at the thighs, really nice double joints at the knees, nice tight articulation, swivel at the boot cut, and the ankles can go forwards and backwards, and they do rock side to side. So these guys are much more in that modern articulation aesthetic, so you should be able to get some really nice poses out of them. So Geyer Wolf utilizes the same body here, but he's got a completely different paint deco in this sleek black and this incredibly metallic silver like i am blown away by how shiny that silver paint is on this guy he looks very chromed out it is a really awesome look of course his helmet is slightly different with the visor up there and of course it's got that unique design and if we pull this head off here we actually have a completely different head which we talked about is of course a nice homage to a real life person Gary Goggles. He's even got the little goggles on his forehead there with the deco. Um, beautiful, beautiful figure. And he comes with a few nice little tribute pieces as well, because in addition to that normal clear base, we've also got this glittery blue kind of like ethereal type base there, which is pretty cool. And we have a swappable head. Uh, it's just the same unhelmeted head, but done in a translucent blue like that base. You can see these heads are on ball joints, so we can easily pop the heads off. We can pop the new head on here. Might take a little bit of work the first go around, uh, but now we sort of have like this ethereal version or ghostly version. Heck, maybe it's a hologram, who knows? Uh, but it is very nice, and like I said, so it's a beautiful tribute figure, but it's also a gorgeous action figure all on its own. 
And then there's the Skeledrones. <laughs> there's these cool little guys, which are just like fun bonuses. Like I said, these were the first figures that were shipping. So folks have had these for a little while now, but they definitely round out uh, just this fun little group here. I love the Skeletron like heads on these. They have articulated spider-like legs. You can see they are ball jointed. Uh, and these are a lot of fun that you can kind of like just scatter around with your Red Shadows army there. These figures are awesome. Awesome. And what's really cool is that there are also going to be six inch versions of these figures on the way at some point as well. So really exciting stuff happening surrounding the brand new Robo Skull line. So there you go, my friends. That is a look at the new action figures that are shipping right now as part of the Robo Skull Mark II Kickstarter campaign. These amazing new Skeletron figures. Uh, I love this retro figure so very much, but the modern figures are also really, really well done. I'm very impressed by these, and my excitement and anticipation is even higher now for when Robo Skull Mark II finally ships. I cannot wait for that. I will definitely be doing a video on that when it does arrive. So stay tuned for that. But in the meantime, if you are interested in your own Robo Skull figure or any of these awesome new Red Shadows figures as part of this line, you can order them now. Actually, even if you missed out on the Kickstarter, uh, as of the recording of this video, you can still go to Skeletron.com and they are available. I will link that in the video description below. Thank you guys so very much for watching this video. Please let me know what you think. Have you ordered these? What do you think of them? Are you excited for Robo Skull? Are you finding out about these for the first time here? I'd love to hear your thoughts. Be sure to hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe. And until next time, my friends.